This one's gonna be a little bit longer and I apologize for that. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of branches right here. I guess I should have planned this a little bit differently, huh? Well, it was gone by the time I found where it was. Johnny Pink, this is, check this out. This is an 800 millimeter F11 lens. I have been, it has been suggested to me to try it for a long time. And even in the last video that I'll list up here, I, I've never wanted to try it because it is an F11. It's a slow lens. I like, as I said in the last one, I like a fast lens, as fast as I can possibly afford. Your photos, when you have a lower ISO, are better. They're cleaner. What I'm noticing using this one for the very first time, and this is a rented lens, is that my ISOs are shooting way up there. I'm shooting at 5,000, 6,000, 8,000 ISO, which is higher than I would want to shoot, but I'm shooting it on the R5. I'm not too worried about it. It won't be super clean, but I'm gonna see what I can get. <coughs> Sorry, I had a little bug in my nose. It's facing away from me. So at least for the next couple of days, I'm gonna be shooting this. I'm gonna reserve any kind of comments on it other than saying so far what I have seen is the ISO shoots way up there. But I knew that. I'm gonna see what I can get out around the water. As you can see, it is cold, it is gray, so my light is flat, I don't have much. This would be a fantastic lens in bright, direct sunlight. So I am going to shoot later in the day, tomorrow morning, I think I'm, uh, I'm gonna see what I can get. So I'm gonna hold off on any kind of comment. And before I return it, because it is a rental or a hired lens, I will give you guys my thoughts on it. More than anything, man, it's an inexpensive lens and it's got lots of reach, which is really, really cool. So I think I'm gonna wander this way and go hit the water go around the lake and see what I can find. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Let's look at some photos while I'm looking. <laughs> that was a hummingbird. All right, we'll see ya.
Well, this is, uh, well, it's day three with this lens. I have to return it tomorrow, so I won't get much more shooting in with it. Again, it's another cold gray morning. And I'm hoping to get something out this way. This is the Satwiwa Indian National Park, State Park. It's absolutely beautiful out here. I'm really uh, hoping I get something. I got one bird that was sitting up on a sign. Opportunistic, you have to shoot what is there when it's, when you can. Oh well, let's go see what we can get up here. I, I processed a lot of the uh, thousands of shots that I shot both in sunlight and, oh, mountain biker, in both sunlight and on a cold gray morning like this. I'll tell you what I think in just a little bit, because I won't see all these photos until later, but what I have processed so far, and I'm still not done. Wow, let's go this way. It is so incredibly quiet and beautiful here. I'm not seeing as much as we did the last time. I have not seen any hummingbirds at all here. And I have not seen the lazuli bunting. Um, those little red birds, I'll have to look up and put what those are on the screen. Wow. I hope I got something. That's all I can say is I hope I get something. I never anticipate that I'm gonna get amazing shots. And uh, I'm always surprised and I have fun. I'm gonna wander back towards my car and go hit another area and see if I can't get some more shots. And I might go out this evening too. Beautiful area, I had to share this with you. I know it's not part of this 800 millimeter F11, but this area is beautiful. So while I'm walking back to the car to go shoot at another location, see if I can find anything else, let's talk about a few disadvantages to this lens. The F11 is the biggest thing. So on the R5, it's not a problem because you can handle the high ISO. If you have super bright sunlight, you can shoot it on the R7, which is an amazing camera with all the same features as the R5, other than it doesn't shoot 8K. And, uh, that one you're shooting at 1280 millimeters straight out of the camera. So if you have bright sunlight and you can keep your ISO, ISO low, you have a lot of reach. And for wildlife, for me, what I want is reach. I want a fast shutter speed so I can freeze the motion, but with this F11, it does push the ISO up rather high. The JPEGs coming out of both cameras when it's processed in the camera look really, really good but you can always do better with the raw files and especially with all the new editing soft software that we have. So that's the biggest one I think is F11. Another disadvantage of this is there is no lens hood and that's maybe so that they can let in as much light as possible. It's long when it's extended, but of course it's 800 millimeters. You can retract it to stick it in your bag and it retracts rather small. And so that's kind of a, a, a plus actually um, disadvantages. That's really some of the only disadvantages that I can think of at the moment. If I think of any others, I'll stick them in right here. Another disadvantage is your subject has to be kind of far away from you. You can't show, shoot anything that is up close. That minimum focus distance is quite atrocious. Whereas the 800 RF, of course, you're paying $17,000 for that as compared to the 900 is only, I think it's really short. It's like six feet or something, really small, which is good. 
so you can feel your frame. So on the R5, I think that this 800 millimeter works way better than it will on the R7, just because of the high ISO that you need to make your photos look good. So, and that takes me to another advantage of this one, which is the price. This thing is only $900 and it'll probably go on sale around Black Friday, some of the Christmas sales, anything like that. So another win-win for this camera as, or this lens as far as the price goes. It's super lightweight and you can walk for a really long time with it. And if you have a backpack on, again, it'll retract and then you can put it into your backpack and keep going. Doesn't take up much more space than uh, a little bit more than the 100 EF with the telly on the back. Awesome. This thing is ungodly sharp. And one thing that this particular lens has taught me is that the RF glass is so much better. I was not impressed with the 100 to 400. It's just too slow as compared to the older 100 to 400, which is an EF mount. This 800 is so fast to focus. It is so sharp. And because you have so much distance, you can still get some really nice background compression. And then using software and filters, you can smooth that out even more. So this is King Gillette Ranch. This is about an hour later. There are dragonflies here. This is kind of where an F11 actually is an advantage because you have such a greater depth of field. The eye autofocus, which is what we're paying for on all these new cameras, right? The eye autofocus on this is so amazing that it just picks up and it locks right onto these things. It's, it's actually mind blowing, the technology that we have available, you know, that we have available at our fingertips these days. And I was listening to someone talk about how the camera, you know, it, it does everything for us. Well, that's what we're paying for now. If you can go out and take a great photo. Anyway, that's, that's what we're paying for these days is the technology in these cameras. That's why you're buying them. Otherwise, you can pick up an old DSLR that'll do the exact same thing for 200 bucks and call it done. Why do you need this new stuff? Why do you get excited about it? But that's what this, this stuff does. Now, I don't think Sony has anything in the price range of the R7 for wildlife. And the reason I like that is because of the crop factor. It's lossless, it's, so it's better than using a teleconverter. And you have that large megapixel sensor, which is something I like. That's why I never liked the D500. I thought the megapixel crippled it, the, the small sensor crippled it. So it, for me, it didn't work. I'm hoping for some hawks, but anyway, everyone's got different preferences on what they want and, and, and what works for them. I'm going to come back out here, not today, but at some point with a different lens that I can zoom in and out so I can get my dragonflies. There are dragonflies here and that's so exciting. I haven't seen any except for I think one at Sepulveda where they were last year wander a little bit more and of course the little baby ducks those are so cute they're not babies anymore they're getting pretty big this way if you made it this far thank you please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed you're welcome to do that it's free it doesn't doesn't cost you anything and it does help my help my channel just a little bit it helps the algorithms but if you did make it this far, 
again if you just skipped here if you just skipped here man that's cool too i'm watching things flying all over the place if you skipped fantastic that's awesome i get easily distracted like by the helicopters and the bugs that are flying through over here what do i think of this lens well again i have negatively or i have been afraid of trying it because of the f11 but what i found and has really kind of changed my mind is this thing is amazing it really is you have to it's not it's not an f4 it's not an f5 6 and it's only nine hundred dollars a thousand dollars so for what you're getting it is awesome again i don't know that i'd shoot it on the r7 because the iso would go so high yes you can clean that up with uh some any of the ai i use lightroom and i'm actually enjoying their new ai as well the reason i use it on the r5 is having my iso shoot to 5000 8000 10000 because i want a super fast shutter speed it works i can put it in lightroom i clean it up doing my normal filters and everything else regional airport not as quiet as it was this morning i can clean it up and i think it looks phenomenal i put a bunch on instagram so if if some of these photos you see and it has an instagram logo next to it that means that i put it up on instagram and the thing about the phone, or when you put it up on Instagram, it looks okay. Yeah, those photos look great. But when I see something on my screens, I want to see it jumbo. I want to see it large because that's where it really looks amazing. So I do my best to put it into a video so that it looks amazing. I've shot this now in 8K on this and 4K and thousands of photos. So it, it is kind of long. What do I think of it? Man, it is an awesome, fun lens. If you're getting into photography for the first time and you want to use this lens, I would recommend the R5, especially because it has gone on sale. If you're new to photography and you want another amazing setup that has more versatility, I would recommend the R7 because of the reach with the Canon 100 to 500. Man, that is a phenomenal setup. <laughs> and the reason I recommend Canon is because I'm not real familiar with Sony and I don't think Nikon, Nikon has anything in in this genre i'd like to try some nikon lenses but the reality is they're not available they've been out for a long time and they're just not available so that's my recommendation thank you for watching i really do appreciate it again please give it a thumbs up canon 800 f11 this is a really cool lens we'll see you guys sunlight like this afternoon morning anyway let me show you these photos <laughs>